Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back with you this Sunday and give thanks for uh, the gift of community and prayer and support that we share here at Monta Vista. Welcome. If you are visiting with us, we extend a special welcome to you for being with us this morning. If you are worshiping with us online and visiting also, we give thanks that you have found us online on our YouTube channel. If you are visit, if you are worshiping with us online and do not have the worship package, you can go to monavista.org, download that packet. It has the liturgy and music, everything you need for the service. Follow along and gather up communion elements, whatever makes communion for you, for our time of gathering at the table, both in presence uh, physically and virtually. We believe that this is Christ's table and it is Christ who invites us all, so no one is uh, excluded from the table. Let us breathe in God's spirit. Let us all be reminded that God is with us in all that we experience. Let us know that we are created for our relationship and community by our God who gathers us up this day to worship. Let us worship together as the church.
and that is what our church is all about. In your bulletin is the prayer list as we knew on Friday, and I have quite a few updates to it, and we'll open it for you to share any that you have, and then those of you worshiping with us online will have the opportunity to voice your joys and your concerns from where you are during our time of prayer. We continue in prayer for Ernie Ashcraft's family. His memorial service was yesterday, uh, a delightful time of celebrating his life and all that he has contributed to this world, the joy of his belovedness as one of God's uh, children. So we celebrate that 92 years of his life. Michael Cook got a birthday present he was not expecting. He returned from his vacation uh, testing positive for COVID. Um, asymptomatic, thankfully, uh, but he is staying home through tomorrow and will be back. We have, uh, he has softball, of course, Tuesday, and we won't miss that. And we have staff meeting Tuesday, so he'll be back for that, and we pray for him to continue um, healing and test negative very soon. Eleanor is uh, going to the cardiologist uh, to address the AFib that has uh, zapped her energy and left her tired and unable to uh, live the full uh, life that she so enjoys. And we pray uh, for uh, wisdom for the cardiologist and direction to bring healing to her. We uh, also uh, have a few others who are uh, dealing with COVID. Um, Lynn, our administrative assistant's husband, uh, tested positive for COVID last week, so she worked from home. And now, uh, yesterday, she alerted me that she was starting to feel some cold symptoms and didn't know yet, was still testing negative, but this morning she tells me she is now COVID positive. So she will be home uh, another week uh, with her symptoms and we pray that it remains um, minimal and quick recovery. Uh, Janice and Larry Sanchez, after it was announced last week that I was home with COVID, uh, let me know that they too were dealing with COVID. Janice a little more uh, symptoms than Larry, and uh, but she told me later in the week that she was on the mend and doing better. But we pray uh, for no lingering effects of COVID for her. We also, um, Gail Sutton let me know yesterday, day before yesterday, that Jesse had been taken to the hospital with COVID, congested and not doing really well, but she tells me today that she's doing much better, but her sister Renee has tested positive for COVID. So that means that Gail is uh, very anxious and uh, worried about herself and her daughters, so we keep them all in our prayers and offer support for them. Uh, Denise Hamilton continues with her uh, health concerns, went to the hospital this week, uh, thinking that she had a blood clot and uh, did not. Um, but the blood thinners that she's on, they did increase it and uh, trying to make sure that she uh, can be restored to health. Uh, Lisa had, uh, reminded us last week that her daughter Erin is on our prayer list, has a mass and a biopsy had not been done yet, um, and the mass is growing, so they still don't know anything yet. She has the biopsy scheduled for this week, and so we pray uh, good news uh, from that and a path to uh, recovery for her. Ann O'Rourke uh, is recovering at home from her ankle surgery. Uh, things went well, and she uh, was home that afternoon and is uh, doing well. Marsha uh, shared with me that her um, 
She's having some tests run and will likely be put back on the kidney transplant list. Uh, some more tests to be done before that is um, determined, but I asked her if we could put her on our prayer list so that we could all be in prayer and support for her <coughs> this time. Uh, Paulette shared with me uh, that her son Scott, 33 years old, is going through some really difficult times, both mentally and physically, and uh, lost his job this week and has some physical injuries also, so we want to be in prayer for Scott and for uh, Paulette and Larry during this time. Um, we, of course, want to remember Ukraine and the continued uh, onslaught of violence and uh, threats to their sovereignty uh, by the oppressive uh, presence of Russia. Uh, we also want to remember uh, the asylum seekers, good news that we received from the courts, uh, from the Supreme Court this week. One piece of good news from them this week uh, is that the remain in Mexico uh, can be lifted. So asylum seekers uh, will be coming more um, frequent and we have a bus coming on Wednesday. If you are interested in helping with driving our church van, we do help provide transportation from the hotel to the airport and bus station in Ceylon. Uh, he has a group of drivers who are helping, and, um, and he is always welcoming more uh, to be a part of that team. And of course, as we've outlined already, the concerns with COVID, the variants that are resisting the vaccinations um, that uh, are uh, disrupting life and, and still threatening health and life for many. We have anniversaries, uh, a and anniversary, Greg and Kim's anniversary, 22 years was yesterday. Um, birthdays, Jeff Kleiss is on Wednesday, Suzanne Schaefer on Friday, and Bob Aubrey on Saturday. I also want to give my thanks for the ways that people step up and fill the vacancies, the needs to cover uh, when there is a need. Uh, for Pat, who was in the office on Friday, to get the bulletins copied and folded and ready for today to get the worship packet and email out for everyone to have at home. Uh, she actually confessed to me that she kind of misses it, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> so we were blessed by Pat stepping up and filling in for Lynn on Friday. Also last Sunday for Charlotte and Bonnie, who stepped up to cover my responsibilities in worship when I could not be here, and for Frank, Wally, and Anthony for adjusting everything to make sure that our virtual preacher could be seen on the screen and heard. Um, I watched from home and uh, very much appreciated the ways that it was uh, made possible uh, for a preacher to be here, uh, even if it is virtual. We also um, are giving thanks for John today, who is providing our special music and our meditation during communion. Uh, the gift of music that is so important to the community of Monta Vista, and we give thanks uh, that John is here today. Are there others that you would like to mention today, Pat? Oh, Rita? Yeah. 
Pet pray for Rita, one of the staff where Steve lives, is not feeling well. Thank you for sharing that. So your cousin? My cousin Ronnie. Ronnie. Wally's cousin, Ronnie and Carl, had their baby girl, Juliet Rose, on June 21st. So we celebrate another gift of new life. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give thanks that you are with us always in all that we experience, no matter where we are. Your spirit connects us one to another, whether we are in person with each other or not. Whether we worship in this space or from other places, you are the unity that brings us together. We pray, O oh God, that we draw on that knowledge and strength of knowing that you are the great healer, you are the hope for this world, that you call us to be in community with us, to be in community and relationship with each other. Our needs are many this day. You've heard our concerns. You've heard the joys of new life being born into this world, both little babies and new beginnings for others. We pray, O oh God, that we are aware of what this means, that you are still creating life in this world. You are still present with us in all things, 
no matter how uh, threatening or hopeless situations may seem, you are in them. We give thanks that you continue to nurture life and faith. You continue to call us to respond to the needs of others and know that you work through us in all that we offer. COVID continues to ravage our communities and threaten life and health, continue to disrupt lives. And we pray, O oh God, for recovery of those who are uh, experiencing COVID at this time for new research that can bring new vaccines to uh, work against the variants that are so resistant. For those who are recovering from treatments and surgeries, time in the hospital, we pray that your hope is breathed into their bodies as you breathe life into us at our births. We give thanks for a community that steps up and fills in, that supports one another, and leads this world in the way of peace and hope. Hear us, O oh God, when we pray words of peace and hope, when we pray for those who are suffering the time of grief and loss. Hear us when we pray words of joy in the many ways that your gospel is being experienced in this world. Hear us when we pray, whether we're here in person or offer this moment for those who are worshiping with us online. Hear us when we pray, O oh God, as we continue with the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Blessed One, our Father and our Mother, holy is your name. May your love be embodied in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Protect us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love, and all that your love brings to earth, and the fullness of love that will be, are yours now and forever. Amen. And another who stepped up as uh, Meredith is out another Sunday, is Anne doing our children's moment. Thank you, Anne. Hello. This is another one of those young at hearts. I have a story. It comes from the Hundred Acre Wood. Who knows where the Hundred Acre Wood is? Lisa. It is. It is. The Hundred Acre Wood is in England. And who lives in the Hundred Acre Wood? Many of you. Okay. So here's the story. It's called Scavenger Hunt. Christopher Robin was sitting on a tree stump in the Hundred Acre Wood. It was a beautiful summer afternoon. And he was waiting to say hello to his friends. Hello, Christopher Robin, Pooh said as he and the others arrived. What shall we do on this fine day? Why don't you all go on a scavenger hunt, Christopher Robin suggested. Tiggers love scavenger hunts, Digger yelled. Then he paused. What is a scavenger hunt, exactly? <laughs> he 
he asked, scratching his head in confusion. He looked at Pooh, Piglet, Roo, and Eeyore, but they all shook their heads too. A scavenger hunt is a game of looking for things, Christopher Robin explained to his friends. What kind of things, Rabbit asked. Christopher Robin thought for a moment, oh, let me think. Why don't you look for a small jar of honey, a purple flower, and a red leaf? Then he smiled and added, I also want you to find the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Who was confused? Isn't honey the greatest thing in the whole wide world? <laughs> honey is pretty sweet, Christopher Robin said. But there is something even greater. Something even greater than honey? We must find it. The friends went to Pooh's house first to find a small jar of honey. His smallest jar was high up on the shelf. Pooh pointed it out to his friends. It was the perfect size for carrying on a scavenger hunt. Pooh looked around. Oh, how will I get it down, he wondered aloud. Climb on my shoulders, Tigger suggested. Who did as Tigger suggested, and he reached the middle shelf and a big jar of honey, but he couldn't reach the smaller one. Rabbit, can you help too? Of course, Rabbit replied. Rabbit climbed on top of Pooh and stretched out his arm. I can't quite reach it either, Rabbit said. Rabbit looked down at the smallest up member of their group. Roo, could you hop up here, please? Sure, Roo said. He bounced up in, onto Rabbit's back and managed to grab the small jar of honey. He dropped it down to Kanga, who caught it gently in her bag. We found our first scavenger hunt item, Kanga said. Now we need a leaf and a flower, Who said as they walked out of his house to start searching for the next item. Does anybody remember which should be red and which should be purple? No one could quite recall. Well, here's a red flower, who said, bending down to pick a flower growing near his front door. And it smells nice. Then it's perfect, Kanga said. Everyone else agreed, too. Rue looked around the base of a tree near Pooh's house. Kneeling down, he grabbed a big yellow leaf. I found a leaf, but it's not purple, he said excitedly. Rabbit said, I think we have some white paint in my house. We can paint the leaf purple. Will it still count as an item on our scavenger hunt? I think so, he said. Together, they all headed to Rabbit's house. After pulling a half-filled can of paint from his closet, Rabbit delicately started painting the leaf. Everyone took a turn painting it. In no time, the leaf was a perfect, bright-colored shade of purple. After giving it a little time to dry, Kanga placed the leaf in her bag next to the small pot of honey and the red flower. Now all we need to do is find the greatest thing in the whole world, Piglet said. Where do you think we'll find it? Maybe it's hiding somewhere in the woods, Digger suggested. Let's search the hundred acre wood, Pooh said. Together we might be able to find it. They headed back into the wood. Greatest thing in the world, where are you, Pooh called. <laughs> Tigger searched under rocks, Rabbit checked in trees, Eeyore looked in the clearings, Owl checked the treetops, and Roo and Kango looked near the streams. But the greatest thing in the world was nowhere to be found. The friends searched and searched the hundred acre wood. They couldn't find the greatest thing in the world anywhere. Soon it grew quite late and dark. The friends decided to find Christopher Robin to show him how they had done on the scavenger hunt. They all held hands so no one would get lost in the dark. Finally, after what seemed like forever, they found Christopher Robin sitting on the same tree stump waiting for them. They had made it all the way back to where they had started. Have you finished?
finish the scavenger hunt? Christopher Robin asked. No, who said Sally. But we all looked together. And we found almost everything, Tigger added. Christopher Robin smiled. But you did find the greatest thing in the whole wide world. What do you think it was? Friendship. 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 Love. Love. Cooperation. Okay, all of those go into one big word, and the big word is community. Okay, you see where the trend is going here? <laughs> um, community means we're never alone. We have a wonderful community here in the church. We have littler communities. We have family communities. But communities are important. And it's important that we participate in ours. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for the people in our lives. Thank you for the people in our lives. Thank you for the opportunity to be with them and to participate with them in many, many things.
Take that thought in a different direction, though. A few chapters earlier, our text today begins with after this. Those are always fun. After what? Well, a few chapters earlier in Luke, Jesus announces his mission of ushering in a new day of God's reign in the world where the poor receive good news, captives are released, blind, the blind receive sight, and the oppressed are free. A new day of bringing the healing presence of God to lives and communities so that all will know the wholeness of God's realm. Jesus gathered up disciples to teach them and show them the way of mission work. And that's the after this of today's passage. Here in chapter 10, Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There are many who would welcome the message of this mission, but there are too, far too many people to carry out the work. So, Jesus commissions 70 more disciples and sends them out in pairs. Luke's is the only gospel to include this story of the sending out of the 70. You see, Luke envisions the mission of God's realm to be carried out by many followers of Jesus instead of just a few. The message of good news for the outcast, the oppressed, and marginalized. And the empire that causes these conditions is just too important to leave it in the hands of only a few. And these were likely both men and women, because Luke has already told us that there were also women disciples with Jesus. Ushering in an unprecedented time of mission work, for sure. It's an invitation to risky business, though. Jesus tells these 70 to travel lightly. And there's risk in that. Have you gone on a trip and not taken anything with you? I doubt it. I'm one to overpack, for sure. But what about taking extra? What if no one welcomes them? How will they eat? Where will they sleep? Ah, the risk of trusting God to be present and to provide. Carry nothing with you and rely instead on the hospitality of the people who welcome you into their homes. And be prepared for both rejection and welcome both opposition and reception. It comes with a job. Be ready to move on in protest of those who withhold their hospitality and do not receive the gospel message you bring. These disciples will quickly learn what Jesus has already been experiencing. You see, hospitality is the full manifestation of God's reign in the world. Hospitality, table fellowship, welcoming one another in the name of Christ. Notice that the first word to be spoken to those whose houses they enter is a word of peace. Jesus says, first say, peace to this house. This peace is the Jewish understanding of God's peace, God's shalom, that expresses well-being and restoration. Jesus gives clear instructions about how to respond and not react in their engagement with the world. The gospel is, after all, invitational and not forced upon people. Today's Christianity has a lot to learn about that understanding of following the ways of Jesus. To avoid reacting to whatever is the behavior of those the disciples encounter, they must be grounded in God's peace and the nearness of God's realm. The way of the world is to react to everything. Our news cycles, politicians, social media, 
clubs, and oftentimes faith communities. They all tempt us to be reactionary rather than grounded in God's peace. God's shalom is about more than simply being calm or free of conflict. It's embodying a confidence in God's abiding presence so that others can be drawn into that realm and embody it for themselves. It's recognizing that God's presence makes a real difference in our lives. As we see in the 70 being sent out in pairs, the mission is about relationships, about working together, partnerships, both among the mission workers and with those they encounter. It's about peacemaking between people, about creating community. Our passage from Galatians reminds us that all must carry their loads. Let us not grow weary in doing what is right, the text reads, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. Let us work for the good of all. Wise words found in Galatians. Harvesting what we sow. If we sow seeds of peace and relationship, the harvest will be plentiful. If we sow seeds of discord and reactivity, the harvest will be scarce. What we put in to our work, we get out. Hospitality is at the heart of the gospel, both extending it and receiving it. It's God who works in us and through us to bring about the harvest of what we sow. So what kind of hospitality do we offer? Do we offer to each other, to the stranger, to the outsider, to the immigrant, to those who believe differently from us, to our enemies? Do we sow seeds of God's shalom? In what ways are God's abiding presence in nature evident in the actions and practices of our mission? At Monta Vista. When the 70 return with joy about all that they accomplished, Jesus redirects their joy. Ah, yes, evil has been lessened by the nearness of God's realm, but the text reads, Do not rejoice at this, that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice. That God called you, and you were given the authority to do the work of the gospel. Rejoice not in what we can do. Rejoice in the power of God at work, in the work we do. That's the true joy of living into the nearness of God's realm. Peace to this house were the instructions that Jesus gave as the first words when they enter a house. Peace to this house, the realm of God has come near to you. Trusting in God's presence with us to show us the way of sowing and harvesting. In a time when there is tremendous divisiveness over just about everything, how will we promote God's shalom? In this world. Practice these two proclamations that Jesus gave as part of his instructions to his disciples. Put them in your own words, the way you would speak as you engage others. Like, I see God love in you. God is clearly at work in your life. God's peace is so evident. In you. These are words of invitation to a relationship, to mutuality in our shared humanity, the work of the gospel. How might we come together in understanding each other? May we all carry our loads and not grow weary in doing what is right 
and not give up in doing the work for the good of all and see that the power of God's abiding presence brings the harvest of what we sow. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that you call us to be co-laborers together in bringing your shalom into this world, to drawing nearer to your realm throughout this world. Use us, empower us by your spirit that we will not grow weary. Send us out to bring your reign to all we encounter. Amen. And now we have the joy of John playing our special music with all of us. <coughs> so much for inviting me here to play this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, uh, I was getting ready, and I looked at Holly, and I said, you know, it's been 20 years since I played recorder in public. So it's, it's really kind of neat to, to do this again. It's, I, I don't get the chance to play recorder very much. Being a recorder player, it's a little bit like being a shepherd, you know. The, there's not, not a lot of work around. So I want to thank you all very much for, for having me here. I want to thank Paul that as well for, for, for playing with me. Um, if you ask anybody about the Baroque period in music, two composers always come to mind right away. Of course, J.S. Bach, the, the king of them all. And uh, number two, and pretty close number two, is George Frederick Handel. Handel was... Uh, was most famous for some of the things that he did that were very big and very public, like the water music suite uh, and, and the Messiah. But as wind players, we are very fond of a, of a group of pieces that he wrote specifically for us, uh, and that was the Opus One Sonatas. Uh, they're playable on flute, on, on recorder, also on violin, too. But he wrote them, and they're beautiful snapshots of musical <coughs> thought kind of condensed down. And I, I'm, I'm going to play two movements today. Uh, the first one today for the special music is the Allegro from uh, Sonata Number no. 2 in A minor.
instructions are simple in Deuteronomy 16, 17. Give as you are able, in accord with how God has blessed you. And it is with thanks we offer the gifts of our hands and the fruits of our labors. God accepts them as expressions of our response to the life and love that God has given us. Gifts to the church may be left in the offering plates at the rear of the sanctuary, or given online through Givelify, or simply mailed to the church office. Let us also come to the table of communion, not because we must, but because we may. Let us sit together in humility and thanksgiving, rather than in pride or possessiveness. Let us confess, not that we are righteous, but that we love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to remember him. Let us come, not that we are strong, but that we are needy. Not that we have any claim on Christ, but that he invites us to receive his grace and experience his presence. Let us partake then that Christ may be made known to us in the breaking of bread. We'll join together in our communion hymn, uh, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, number 422 in your hymnal or on the screen. Let us stand and sing. others in 
Christ's name. We eat this bread and drink from this cup to remember the meal Christ had with his disciples. Bless us in our eating and bless us in our drinking so that we may become a blessing for others. Help us find here the strength that we need so that we do not get weary or discouraged in serving and giving witness of your love to a needy world. May your spirit guide us and bless us. Amen. Amen. Those of you worshiping with us online, if you will gather up your communion elements and hold those, and those of you here will be served by our servers coming through the pews. Hold your elements so that we can receive them together as one. Well. Please pray with me. Holy God of life and love, we thank you for the opportunity to give of ourselves to the mission of your reign in this world. 
We give thanks for the opportunity to give of our resources, our time, our passions, and to be nourished at this table where all are welcome, where all are invited, where all matter. Nourish us, strengthen us, send us out to be co-laborers of your realm. In Christ's name, amen. amen. If you are worshiping with us online or here in person visiting with us this day and you believe that God is calling you to explore what it would look like to be a part of this community of faith and fellowship and witness to the power of God's work in this world, I invite you to either come forward at the singing of our closing hymn, reach out to me afterwards in the back or later, those of you worshiping online, you can call the church office or email and let's talk about the work of Monta Vista towards the mission of God's inclusive love in this world. Let us stand and sing together our closing hymn and insert in your bulletin, Nurtured by the Spirit. Let us stand and sing together. Thank mm -hmm. you.